Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi. And today we're going to be taking a look at reattaching the arms to a vintage Jabba the Hutt from Star Wars Return of the Jedi. Now these figures are getting pretty old and uh, in a recent video I talked about toy entropy and the fact that uh, nothing is going to last forever. And Jabba the Hutt is a perfect example of this because more and more now every time I look for a Jabba the Hutt to sort of add to my collection the arms have snapped off it. And that's because the plastic that is used to hold on the arms is starting to degrade and it gets very brittle and and it snaps and so you end up with one like this where his arms are completely detached and uh, he is of no use to anyone. So today uh, I'm going to show you how to reattach those because it's actually a fairly straightforward job so uh, let's just get straight on with it. So here we have poor old Jabber and as you can see both of his arms have uh, fallen off uh, and this is not because a child has sort of over sort of played with him and been rough with him it is just because the plastic that he's used to hold on the arm you can see there's a small ball joint there in his shoulder uh, that plastic uh, reacts with the plastic that the arm is made of and uh, it sort of starts to melt and becomes very brittle and in the end will just snap and so you're left with Jabba the Hutt like this and you can see the remnants of the original sort of arm fixing there in the uh, socket. Uh, so it's just one of those things that is going to happen to I think most Jabba the Hutts over the years. Now he has quite a cool feature the way that if you move his tail his uh, head moves or if it's basically I guess if you move his head his tail moves that still works on this it's just the fact the arms have uh, degraded and it's only going to be uh, the, the plastic that holds on his arms that seems to have this problem everything else is actually fairly sturdily built can't see any issues with that sort of uh, currently so what we're going to do is obviously reattach his arms and to do that we need to remove his head now Jabba's head is actually a hollow sort of rubbery uh, head and you can just remove it by pulling it off you can see here it's got quite a lot of give to it and if you I'm gonna say it's not gently pulling it you really do have to quite sort of firmly pull this it will come away I've done this a few times on various jabbers over the years it always feels like you're going to break something but actually it doesn't break it will give in the end let me keep on going there we go starting to starting to go it's just a little bit of an awkward one as you can see oh there we go and there you see that is his head removed it is pretty tough but it can be done and now we can start to see all the problems that uh, you get inside you can hear there are bits rattling and these are the broken remnants of the arm fixings if i rattle this some more other bits will fall out can you see that is the inside of the sort of the fixings and i think one of them is still held in place on this side so if i just push on this side it will come out as well. So there you go, that is the original fixing for Jabba's arms. That would attach to this little ball here. It's actually a sort of ball and socket joint enabling you to rotate the arm in all sorts of directions. But as you can see, that plastic reacts with the plastic in the arms, becomes weak and it just snaps off. So what we need to do is actually remove the remnants of this ball joint that is in uh, Jabba's arm. You can see I've actually already removed the one on this side. It's a fairly straightforward thing to do. Again, just need to get a screwdriver or something like that and you can prise it out. Uh, it might be that you want to warm up the plastic of the arms because uh, if you warm this up in just boiled water, it does become quite soft and is a little bit easier to do, but you can just do it without that. All you've got to do is sort of jam a screwdriver behind where the ball of the ball socket is and sort of work your way around and in the end that ball will just pop out like so there you go it's that easy now we've got the arm back to its original state and we can work on a way of reattaching these to the figure but actually I think before I would do that I do want to put Jabba's head back in place now when you come to fix this you don't actually have to remove his head if you don't want to I just thought I'd do that so you could have a look and see what it's made of inside uh, you can actually just fix these without having to take his head off but you will end up with bits rattling inside him because obviously the remnants of his uh, arm fixings will still be inside his head by taking the head off it enables you to get those out so the, the jab of the heart when he's finished he won't rattle so anyway let's put this head back on and putting his head back on is about the same level as awkward as it was getting it off it's really just a bit of brute force you can see there's a little uh, line on either side of uh, the neck post and that needs to line up with the two sort of uh, indents that are on the inside of his head so you line it up and then just start sort of squidging around and pushing and you've got to make sure you push it on fully because you don't want it to be left like that with a gap. Uh, you've got to sort of push it down as hard as you possibly can and it will click in place. 
does take a little bit of practice and a little bit of sort of twisting, but you'll get it on in the end. I think that's almost right. That certainly looks right. His head and tail now works. So just keep sort of pushing down. Sometimes it needs a little bit sort of more man handling, but the head is quite squidgy. And once that's on and his tail works, we can now go ahead and fix his arms. And now, as luck would have it, again, there is a piece of Lego that is the perfect solution for fixing uh, Jabba's arms back on. As you can see, it does require a sort of ball and socket affair. If I go into my little toolbox here of uh, Lego pieces, you can see I have some of these. Now, I will print the number on screen so you know what it is. It's a Lego Technic pin, but with a ball joint on the end of it. And uh, I've used these for other projects that you'll have seen on the, the channel. Very useful to have, and it's always very useful to have a little pot of Lego uh, when you're fixing toys because you never know what you're going to need and this is sort of a universal pieces that I've used many times before for other sort of projects and I just happen to have a lot of these in my stocks. Now these are a tad too small they could do with being a slightly bigger diameter but they're close enough that uh, we can certainly work with. If I slot this into his arm you can see that that is a bit too loose. It would work and it would hold in place but I think we can do a better job than that and then there are a couple of ways that we can improve this. One is by getting some PTFE tape. Now I've shown you this multiple times before. Uh, again it's great for sort of stiffening up uh, loose joints on figures. It's a fine tape. You just take a small amount of that and we could wrap it around the end of this ball joint. Then when we put that in the arm it would be much stiffer and it would all hold in place. Uh, so we could do that. That's the sort of easy option. But the other option is something that I prepped uh, sort of the other day basically is I've got a couple more of these uh, axle pins and I've just you can see you blobbed some super glue on the top of them and then let it dry. Looks a bit messy at this point but that doesn't matter because this is all going to be hidden. And the uh, super glue just adds an extra bit of thickness to uh, this uh, ball joint. So now if I was to drop this into his arm socket which will be much tougher because this is just a little bit too big now. But now when I slot this in you can see that that actually holds in place just because there's an extra bit of super glue on the top of it. So that uh, I would say is probably the better method but it takes a day to do because you've got to blob some super glue on it and then leave it to uh, harden but I think that is my preferred method. So you can see here I have another one ready which we can slot into his other arm and again that's nice and stiff and it will hold in place. So there you go, we have two arms both with these uh, Lego Technic axle pin sort of things in them. We can now insert these into the body and hopefully his arms will stay attached. So for attaching them to the body there's already a hole there because that's where the original fixing was. All you have to do is line up the Lego pin, push it into the hole. Now this rubber has got a little bit of give to it so it actually grips really nice and firmly. So we can push that in. We'll do the same on the other side, like so. There you go, there you go. You've got both arms held in place and we should be able to pose Jabber much like we could when he first came out of the packet. See, everything moves, everything holds in place and it looks just as good as new. And again, this is the sort of fix that if you don't like it and you want to change it further down the line, you've not actually changed anything on the original figure. You can still remove these. You can see I can pull that out. Uh, the hole hasn't changed and we can even get this axle pin out of the arm. So if you want to ever come back and do a different fix or someone makes a 3D print or something of these uh, that's broken parts, you just can uh, take them out and replace them. So it's one of those sort of perfect fixes. You get a nice jab of the hut that's really good and really displayable but you can always change them if you want to in the future. And here is the finished Jabba the Hutt ready to uh, fight on and uh, be part of my collection. The uh, fixes are sometimes really simple. It just takes a little bit of sort of uh, sideways thinking to work out how uh, best you can do it. I've seen other people do fixes on this, which I've not really been that impressed with the sort of end results. With this way, you actually keep all of the functionality and all of the sort of the mobility that the original Jabba the Hutt had uh, because you're replacing a ball joint with a ball joint. And so he can be posed just how he would have been able to be posed uh, when you first had him back in the 80s. So uh, fixes like this are sort of really quite satisfying to do. And as I've said before, when you're doing sort of fixes for toys, uh, it's always good to have a little pot of Lego because you just never know when uh, you're sort of going to need a certain piece or it will give you some idea of a way to fix it. And in this instance, that little Lego axle pin with a ball joint on it uh, was the perfect piece to use. So I hope you've
you've enjoyed this video and if you have then make sure to tap the subscribe button and also tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video and if you'd like to help support Toyploy then why not become a YouTube channel member you'll get early access to all of my restoration videos or you can support me on Patreon again everybody there gets early access to all of my restoration videos and thanks for watching Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.